This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Alright, we're here on this little island which I have named Drake Blood Sands after we defeated the Zarups that lived here. I was given the right to name this island and I did so. And now we're going to check out Broken Spear Pass and this ruined tower in the hopes of finding loot that we can sell to buy a spyglass. Because our options for getting the flag are at this time not desirable. I don't know what else I can do with this island. All I know is Broken Spear Pass awaits us. Well, this looks grim already. <clears throat> Bones crunch underfoot, strewn across the sand, or skeletons half buried in wind blown dunes, or lying bleached and baking in the sun. Their corpses still wear the tattered remnants of their clothing, their packs tangled in their limbs. Worms circle like vultures high above you. Sounds like they got packs. I mean, let's talk about these packs. You feel a tug at your leg. Mother Sharp Rock. Oh, yeah. We have. A Zarup in our crew now. We have a Zarup in our crew. Mother Sharprock clings to your boot, staring out at the dunes, then looks up at you. Her eyes are wide with fright. She fears this place. The sand is strangely lively here. It dances as if caught in a breeze, but there is no wind to stir it. Several piles of grit rise above the dunes in suspiciously orderly mounds. Let's use a ranged weapon to test a sand mound's reaction. The mound of sand whips itself into a small storm. It rages across the dunes, and its outburst awakens the mounds of sand beside it. Together they rise from the desert as a swirling cloud and bear down upon you en masse. want to put it on a little slower speed not the slowest because that's just what do we have here desert worms all right chanting that she casts that she affects it there I'm just making sure again that people are doing the kind of stuff I want them to do my character is so weird I don't I don't know, the build I have for my character is so weird, I never know what to do with my own character. Because she can do a variety of different things, all of which are weird. Like, as an Ascendant, hypothetically, I'm supposed to be waiting until I get max focus to use my powers. My Cypher powers, but... If I do- it takes me forever to get to max focus, unless I stand there and do nothing but shoot the bow. In which case, I'm not using any of my Priest abilities. And, I mean, honestly, like I said in the very beginning when I made this character, Priest and Cypher are a shitty combination. A terrible combination. And especially if you're an Ascendant. So then I just want to open up with, like, Charm every time, which is fine, except for the fact that I get a minus one power level on it because I'm an Ascendant, which also is fine. All that means is... Well, it doesn't seem to be even indicating that I have a penalty. It says I have minus one Cypher power level. 
which should be penalizing the duration of Whisper of Treason. And maybe it is, I don't know, maybe it is and it's just not showing up here. But it still lasts for a good long time. But the only thing is, if I want to get to that cool Ascended buff, I've got to save my focus. So if I'm sitting here casting stuff in the beginning, then I'm not saving my focus in it, and it kind of defeats the purpose of being Ascended. And I mean, do I want to buff in the beginning? Is it even worth it to buff? Should I just be dropping sunbeams on fools? Like, I just, I just feel like I've made a character that I don't know how to play. <laughs> So I'm, it always feels like I'm just doing something random that might not be the best thing I could do with my character at the time. But, fuck it. Let's just charm a motherfucker. At least I like... Charm works really good in this game compared to... There's not a way to reclass. There's only a way to respec your skills and, and abilities. Charm works really good in this game. Oh, plus it's a crit, so that means that that motherfucker's going to be charmed for 33.9 seconds. I kind of just want to. I kind of just want to use my cipher abilities, honestly. So now we've paralyzed the motherfucker. This guy's still charmed. For ages. I- oh, yeah, are they doing the things that I want them to do? They're... No, he's got Discipline Strikes on. But when did he put it on? He engages a Sand Blight. He hits! He always attacks before doing the things I want him to do. Maybe there's just nothing I can do about that. I mean, this thing is set in such a way that he should be using it immediately. before attacking, but he always, he always friggin' attacks. Should he cast the buff that she's supposed to cast? That's good. Aloth cast the spell that he's supposed to cast first. That's good. Aloth kicking ass. Then Aloth, even more bounding missiles going off. She's chanting what she's supposed to be chanting. Okay, now she uses Flames of Devotion, but she didn't use marked enemy on anybody, and she's supposed to use that before. Okay, but this guy's got Wrath of Five Sons on him. Alright, so she fly Flames of Devotion's a dude. I fucking, I fucking, she cast Prayer of the Body on Palagina this time. They both have, they both have Prayer for the Body on them. Adair did what now? He just activated Discipline Strikes five times in a row. All right, I've obviously broken something in his AI script. Ah, self has inspiration, perception not. That's very important. So he, he just wasted the entirety of his discipline activating that shit five times in a row. I still don't understand why he did it after attacking once, but maybe this is the best we're gonna get. Alos then crafts Necrotic Lance, which is the next thing I want him to do, but he misses. Adair is attacking. Now she does Wrath of the Five Sons. After hitting once with her flame power. I paralyzed this guy for 10 seconds. That's good. 
Let's take a look at her AI. Alright, so, lath see, this is above this one, so this is supposed to take more priority. But apparently it's because... It's just like this. She'll, they'll always attack once before triggering off this target and melee range thing, I guess. So maybe that's a bad trigger. Maybe I should just put this on... Always true. Wrath of the Five Sons, 30 second cooldown. Then this, but prioritized by the Marked Prey. Maybe that will work. And maybe if I make it dares... If I make this always true... Wait, why didn't it save the thing I just did on this? Target has inspiration perception not. Is it saved now? Yes. So I think I've I think I've fixed their AIs now. No, there's no chance I'll restart the game to change classes at this point. It's an extremely minor penalty anyway. Where is the thing that tells me? Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with it. Alright, so now I can do some priest shit. Let's just drop sunbeams on some fools. Can I get both of them? That casting time, though. Alright, now the charmed one is dicking around for 18 more seconds. Everybody just kill it. Oh, we found a hidden object. Dude, charm is so much more powerful in this than it was in Pillars 1. I mean, honestly, just with that one ability, I'm overpowered as fuck. I start the fight with 40 focus. That means I could just start the fight and just cast four fucking charms. And it, and it seems to always work. It lasts a long-ass time. It doesn't break when you attack them. I mean, it's just good. I don't even need any other abilities. Oh, yeah, it'll get nerfed. It'll get nerfed. I don't even need any other abilities. My wrecking ball. All right. I shall make it so. We've got a primal wind. This whirling cloud of smoke and air flashes with occasional bursts of energy. We've read about scoria before. A chiseled portion of rock, slate gray and pocked with gleaming minerals. When set on the ground, it floats a small distance above the earth. That'd be a cool thing to have. Indeed. Pistol. Dagger and some silver. Bang. 
Oh, we got ourselves a magic item. A pair of gloves that lets you lay on hand somebody once per encounter. It's not a very big heal at all. But I mean, it's free. Well, none of them are going to use something like that. So, we might as well just go on her. Yes. And now I have lesser lay on hands once per encounter. Oh, but with her it it does scale by her might and it scales by her intellect. Nice. So it's better it, it'd be a nice little extra self heal for herself if she needs it. Self heal for herself, I said. God damn it. Oh yeah, I had that before, didn't I? Although didn't it do something kind of different before? Certainly. I can't believe even Aloth has over a hundred hit points. I'm still at 78. I'm at 78 with 15 hit points from food. <laughs> ah, that con. Yeah, the steward literally just sold all our shit on eBay. And shipped it off all over the world. This fragment of a fallen keep stands like a monument to ruin and a beacon for plunder. Yes, plunder, that's what I need. Give to me all of the loots. A narrow wooden tower rises high above you. Above the door at its base hangs a carved and painted mural of Amira and Nigati, engaged in fierce battle. The tower lifts heavily to the side, just a few feet from tumbling over entirely. Take some time to search. Find some crafting ingredients. Strange pendant glowing with soft internal light. You pick up the pendant and notice it's curiously warm to the touch. As if someone had just been wearing it. You've searched every inch of the tower. There's nothing left for you to take. Well, this place wasn't exactly Lootopia. I did get this unique shield and this fine dagger from the from the Zorups. So that's a little bit of money plus some uh, some of their random junk items that I can sell. I'm still far far from 5000 coins though. Where's the amulet? Did I not just take an amulet?
Time acquired. Still not seeing an amulet. Was that fake loot? Was it like, hey, you got an amulet, psych? Because we don't have no fucking amulet, guys. Well, that's disappointing. Fuck you, Drake Scale Sands. I mean, at least the cavern of Zar Tuk Tuk was pretty cool. Nine hours in a room. We got a pelt, Saito. You can't put a price tag on a pelt. Well, you could put a 38 copper piece price tag on it, I suppose. Alright, Jake Blood Sands is explored. Man. Maybe I do want to go get in a fight with a pirate ship, but a really easy one. How does one find a really easy pirate ship? Well, time to find out what's on this island. How are we doing on food and stuff? Not great. We're almost out of rice wine. But that's okay. Then they'll just switch to ale. Got some medical supplies. Can't put a price tag. Well, you know, other than the fact that you actually can. What I like is all the time you spend on land, your people don't eat and drink. I mean... I mean, presumably they're getting food and drink from the island so somehow, because they don't use up your ship supplies of food and drink while you're on land. They will use up medicine if somebody's hurt, which you want them to do. Yes, the ogre does consume more than the others. Look, drink, plus two, Berta. Food, plus two, Berta. She consumes twice as much as everyone else. Worth it for ogre time, I agree. Oh, uh, It's just a drake. We've already fought a drake, it's not a big deal. Okay, I need to also... I need this to happen. Also, why did that turn off? We've got a Zorit Priest, a weird sigil thing. Well, okay, let's get away from that sigil thing. All right, everybody do it. Do what you guys want. Now, the last time I just charmed the Drake and it went great. So, let's just charm the Drake and hope it goes great. What's my chance? 56%? I'll take it. The Drake is charmed. Whoa, what happened to me? Okay, here's what happened. Palagina does what she's supposed to do. He actually isn't casting the correct spell. Oh, because he- oh, shit. If I tell my people to move, they literally lose- No, he didn't literally lose it. He's got it right here. Hmm. At least she did Wrath of the Five Sons first. I got this Drake charmed for... Really hard to get a mouse over on the Drake. There it is. 
22.4 seconds. But... What happened to me? How did I take all that damage? Ah, breath weapon from the Drake. Fucked us up. Alright, let's just see what the NPCs do now. his circle. Seriously, gonna need a selection circle on this Drake. Oh, whatever. Hey, are you blind? Drake still got 13.8 seconds of not doing a damn thing. Why can't she target him with this? Well, can she just... Can she maybe just go attack? Apparently she can. Whoa! What's happening to me? Dude, this fight is weird. I don't understand what's happening. Am I still taking, like, ongoing... A shitload of ongoing doom attack from this breath weapon? Oh, he is. I'm apparently not anymore. Lesser lay on hands! Look, everybody just kill this fucking Drake, please. Except for me, I'm gonna paralyze it. Or I'm not, because it's not an enemy. I'm gonna charm it again. Or I'm not. I'm gonna ice... Or I'm not. Alright, I'm gonna attack it then. How does that feel? Don't breathe. Brutal. <laughs> what is it even? Did it just? Oh, it died. I'm like, did it just make itself fall on us? <laughs> but it's dead. Of course it is. Uh oh, missed a lot of stuff in chat. Uh, what's up, Moz? How you doing? Do you have any advice on game difficulty? I think it's too easy on the difficulty I'm playing, probably. So far, but I know it's going to get way harder and later in the game. Uh, I'm on, I'm on classic difficulty, and I feel like at this point, it's a little bit too easy. Well, that fight wasn't really too easy, but... Depends on how much you want to micromanage. I'm trying to set it to a difficulty where I can let my party just do their own thing and I can just control my character, which is why I have it on classic. If I wanted to control the whole party, I would definitely bump it up to at least veteran. But I don't think I'd play on Path of the Damned, because that's probably too hard. Burning from the Dragon. What's up, Exorius? How you doing? Welcome. 
Being on fire hurts, yeah. Yeah. So. Lester lay on hands, heal Sekarina for two health. Well, we did fine. Don't want to have to pause constantly. Yeah, ideally, once I feel like I have their AI thing set up correctly, I don't want to pause too much. I don't want to have to do like in the first period of the attorney where I'm constantly pausing and micromanaging every character because that shit gets fatiguing. Certainly. Ooh, we got a ring of the solitary wanderer. We got a vessel bone, some scales, some reptilian blood. You don't think it will get harder? Path of the Damned is not that hard either. Well, it was pretty hard in the first game. Drained from a reptilian corpse, this dark crimson blood seems to swallow heat and like a light alike. An uncommon gemstone of deep black, onyx sometimes displays colored bands. Craftsmen and artisans carve it for purposes both practical and artistic. A plus two resolve amulet. Grant's lone wolf. Uh-oh, we become a Kai Lord. They're making a fix to make the game harder? Hmm. Ring of the Solitary Wanderer also gives resolve. And while there are no allies nearby, become exceptionally resistant to hostile effects. This ring was the prized possession of Mikhail Malloy, an Orlan Bleakwalker of the Eastern Reach. He was a solitary man and preferred to work alone whenever possible. His compatriots rarely objected. Few of them could stomach Malloy's presence for any prolonged period. To anyone present, he was a crude, cruel, and generally unlikable soul, even by the brutal standards of the Bleak Walkers. Malloy spoke at length of the countless foes he had bested, great beasts felled, and those he had crushed under his boot. If he was to be believed, the gods themselves trembled at his name. While few, if any, believed his rambling tales, None could deny that the Orlan was a hardy bastard, and had survived on his own through many lesser conflicts. After retiring, Malloy settled in the Deerwood, and lived a quiet, comfortable life. His many rivals and enemies, however, had not forgotten him. A few brief weeks into retirement, his body was discovered in his washroom. That's... you don't want to die in the washroom. Of course no one could stand him, he was an Orlan, right? His neighbors, hardly surprised, testified to the bailiff that Malloy must have accidentally cut off his own head while shaving! <laughs> One of those things that just happens, you know. Nothing had been stolen save for his ring. Accidentally cut off your own head while shaving. You know, it happens. It happens. All right, plus two resolve is nice. I can see that being good for him, but he's got this great thing. Maybe she could, hmm. Does anybody want plus two resolve? I could finize his leather armor, but I'm not going to. I like that it shows you on your unique items. It shows you if you've got if you've got the materials to uh, like hers, her sickle and her lantern. We've got whatever we need to at least do some kind of enchant on them because it shows you that little plus. But we can't enchant his armor right now. But we could enchant his Saint Draga's skull. All right. Um. I don't think anybody's going to wear that, actually. Plus two resolve. Max health. Oh, that's why he has so much health.
I think Token of Faith is about to be 410 copper. But this ring... Oh, he's already got two rings, really? Deflection and Fortitude, Reflex, and Will. All right, he's going to take this ring off. He's going to take this ring off. And we're going to give that ring to her. And call it a day. Well, this looks great on me. In fact, he doesn't have a three goddamn constitution. That's true. That also makes a big difference. What does this thing do to us? Oh, shit. Why does it say pure cow breath? It just puts a curse of darkness on it. Minus five accuracy. It's weird that only Aloth is fighting this thing. Hold on. Everybody get out of here. Tell me. If we're gonna blow that thing up, let's blow it up in style. That's what I'm talking about. As you wish. We got sand dunes. How much stuff we can craft? Make some forgetful night, some seafood stew. Perception, resolve, and intellect. See, this is the shit you do if you're trying to do, like, Triple Crown solo. If you're trying to solo the game on the hardest difficulty, you probably use, try to get the best food buffs, you probably use a lot of explosives and drugs and potions and scrolls. Especially if you're soloing with a bad soloing class. That was a vast and intricate locale. Yeah. Desert. Water 19, all right. Now we're talking. I don't get to name this little island, though. I don't feel like I'm making my way up to my 5,000 that I need, especially since I'm spending 15 coins a day on wages. Am I losing money on this journey? Let's see what the Fang Strait has for us. Other than screwing us over somehow. In before hull damage. The water darkens off the starboard bow of your ship, and jagged spurs and spits rise from the waves in the near distant. Raised voices carry from the helm. Who the fuck is Nia? Oh, she's the Orland Cannoneer I, I uh, picked up. The Teotera Marvel is near here. Every sailor must see it once. Nia's hands are clasped together in urgent entreaty. 
but Beodol is clenching the wheel with white knuckled determination. I don't care if it's under its salty bosom. We're not sailing through a reef. Beodol no notices you and relaxes. Captain, help me talk sense into Nia. Nia gapes at you both. And Miss Archan, sailors wait weeks for weather and seas this smooth. If you ever wanted to see the Teotera Marvel, this is the time. Some of the other crew have gathered to listen, a hopeful shine in their eyes. I like how I can talk to my crew members as though they're people. I mean, you know what I mean? Like. Oh, yeah, it should. I, that's right, I made Chatupatek, not how you pronounce it, my navigator, even though he literally has no skill as a navigator, so that's not going to go badly. What, what is the Teotara Marvel? Nia shrugs. It's supposed to be a grand sight, an ancient mystery. I haven't seen it myself. Eld Engram nods. A greybeard I crewed with claimed to have seen it. Swore it brought him ten years of good health and favorable winds. The other sailors murmur eagerly. Yeah, he's the guy I saved at the beginning of the game instead of the crate. That's right, Moz. And now I've made him my unskilled navigator. Look, he'll learn. He'll learn on the job, right? Navigation is the kind of thing you just learn by doing, right? Beodol sighs. <sighs> Even if this marvel is close, there's no guarantee we'll see it by going through this reef. Jatupak, do we have charts to guide us through the reef? Chatupak nods half-heartedly. Yeah, because he doesn't know how to navigate. Dear Patchy, but they'll do, assuming Beodol can get us through. Beodol scowls at Chatupak. Rumdum Regair is the guy that I bailed out of fucking jail. Rumdum Regair, what's the condition of our hull? Rumdum Regair grins. It's in good repair, Captain! I wouldn't sail through a reef myself, but if there's a good time to try, this is it. Take us through the reef. The dead coral juts from the surface, grasping above like the legs of a spider, and the wind whistles as it passes across the jagged structures. Below the water, schools of fish flash among the brilliant reefs. Failure, because my helmsman isn't good enough. Beodol attempts to guide the ship through the reef, but with a shudder that rattles your bones, the vessel scrapes against the reef. A sound of tearing wood echoes across the deck, and hands scatter, descending into the hold to locate and repair any damage before it spoils the stores. Oh god. Hey, it's all worth it. Oh my god, that's a lot of hull damage. It's all worth it for a point of sailor experience, though. You learn by failure. Do 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 do, And we lost a little bit of medicine. The variegated shallows give way to blue depths. An enormous sinkhole opens around you, yawning wide enough to swallow a fleet. Beodol sighs with relief as Nia searches the horizon for any sign of the mythical marvel. The sea cow sails on. Okay, see? We got some shit out of it. But we didn't see no marvel. What? Where the fuck are we? Oh. Ah, oh, we're right where we were. Oh, there's the Marvel, though. It's an actual thing. And we're repairing our, our hull, so no bigsies. That place has a skull. If 
this were some to see, the ship would have been destroyed. Yeah, or like half the crew gone. Yeah, no shit, right? The sea here is vast and as smooth as cyan glass. Jumping up and down, Chetupek shouts and points to port at the pale pillar of luminous Adra rising from beneath the surface of the water. Beodal takes you closer. Much of the stone is encrusted with coral, but the visible portions coil above the water in long, looping spirals. Adra normally grows in large pillars, but this formation looks almost like seven tentacles of some terrible sea monster grasping for the sky. Oh, I've got a good feeling about this. Nia whistles low. So odd. Had to be anguithans. Oh, we just get, Hey, our morale's maxed out now. Should be, anyway. Eldegrim scoffs. Even they couldn't do that! That's Andra's slow, steady work! The Audra catches the sunlight, gleaming as if it glow from within. Indeed, it's hard to tell whether the Audra's strange contours have been shaped by slow wear of the sea or distorted by it, and something about that ambiguity makes the vision all the more extraordinary. The rest of the crew chimes in, debating the wonder's meaning and origins in low, awed voices. Now we've seen it, let's move on, shall we? Hmm. Clearly, this is the work of the gods, and we are blessed to have seen it. By Andra's grace, Eld Ingram whispers, head bowed. Chetupek and Nia exchange grateful grins. Palagina feathers audibly ruffle. She exhales sharply and smooths her plumage. She likes piety. I think we only gain one morale there because now we're at max. Sailor traits. Crew members naturally project progress in their assigned jobs when they earn sailor experience. Crew members can only advance in jobs. They have at least one rank. <gasps> Oh, so he can't even advance as Navigator, because he has no ranks in it. That sucks. So Tupac and Eld Angra move to the aft castle, eyes locked on the Teatara Marvel until it disappears below the hot horizon. I think she does- oh, that's right, she doesn't like piety. You're right. Beodal gained a rank. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. I'm a little bit sad that poor Chetupak is never going to get better as a navigator. I mean, I don't need him as a deck. He's basically a backup character. I just have him as navigator rather than sitting and resting crew. Just because I thought maybe having a bad navigator was better than having no navigator at all. I don't actually remember what the navigator does on the ship. One of these... All ships benefit from having a navigator, but it doesn't tell you what a navigator actually does for you. I feel like, as complicated as they made this ship management, they did not give you sufficient information about it. Like, it literally doesn't tell you what the fucking navigator does. I mean, yeah, it navigates, but what does that mean? We're not actually navigating anywhere, we're just fucking sailing around. I can only assume... Should we try this above my level place? No. No, we should not. I wish... I wish that something would indicate to me on this map 
what places I've already cleared. Like, I wanted this to change color or get a little mark on it or something that tells me you've already cleared that place out. There's no sense in ever going back there. Versus, you have not yet done that place. We're not going to rob a merchant, probably because the merchant would kick our ass. Alright, um... Well, we're still looking for... A way to make some money. Duck it, let's be brave. Being brave! Let's grab some fruit. And let's hope that this place doesn't destroy us. I see some imps. Oh god, what is that thing? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a thing with kind of low will. So, that's what matters to me. If I can charm it, I'm not too... It's a troll. It's regenerating. Except it's not regenerating for fire and acid. It's a troll. And it's got one skull above us. And there's a couple brine amps. So, whatever. I'm not worried. When's the fight start? Oh, now, now I guess. Charm worked. Wait, Oh my god, its health is going down so low, so slow. Look at- oh my god, we're barely even hurting this thing. charm for 2.1 seconds. so quickly. No longer charmed. 
I got no, I got nothing I can do except start lighting this fool up. down to half. Oh fuck. Are we gonna get a heal ever? Is anybody ever gonna heal? I wonder what my max focus is now, because I'm at 83 and I'm still not ascended. Now I'm at 94. I'm at 94 and I'm still not ascended. Are all these people out of their res- there? she's out. He's out. He's out. So we're just auto-attacking this thing down from now on. She's still got two first level spells. Oh, let's try Blessed Harvest. Now I'm ascended. Come on. Did Blessed Harvest work? She missed. Okay. Curses. I'm just gonna spam paralysis on this thing until. Ah, uh, now, now I'm out of focus. Okay. Just light it up. We've almost got this troll down. It just did some kind of weird vine thing to us. We win! Oh, apparently there was a... How'd the long stream go? It went great, Jen. I went 30 hours. We just gained Tahay's head. The stink of the sea troll's severed head is palpable. Two sacks were necessary to mask it, but they are both now soaked through with putrid blood that smells of rotting fish. It must be endured until you can turn in the prize as a bounty. So... Oh, and we got Pure Cow's head, too. Pure cow's horns, scales, and teeth have torn numerous holes in the sack, causing a constant leakage of blood and viscera. As proof of the drake's demise, this will more than suffice. So, we've inadvertently completed two bounties, even though we don't know who actually gives the bounties, or... The hide of a troll is formed of what appears to be several layers of thin vines, plants, and mulch, forming a thick nearly impenetrable skin. How you doing, Jen? We got the Tears of St. Makawo. Why do we find so many necklaces? The small file clasped to the end of this necklace is purported to contain the tears shed by the martyr, St. Makawo, at the moment of his death. What's per rest? You can make yourself petrified and invincible for a while. Interesting. It's also a ring of overseeing, which gives some extra area of effect. As you like. Indeed.
Yeah, I like it. It's good. I don't think everybody's going to wear that necklace, though. Which means 410 CP in our bank. A ring of overseeing, though, is nice. Extra AoE would have helped me. It would help her. It would help... He's not using any AoEs, though. Would help her with her Chanter aura and her Paladin aura. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to uh, Palagina. A little more aura on her. Wait, does she keep switching to Blessed was Wengrid quickest of his tribe? Why? Why does she keep doing that? Okay. Is there something in your behavior that says, do the damn chant I don't want you to do? She doesn't get the option to set up a chant as a conditional action set. Yeah, she's a chanter and a paladin. She's a chaladin. She's a panter. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Of course. She has feathers instead of hair. She might have feathers and hair. I'm not sure. But she clearly has feathers. I guess this is hair in the back, not feathers. So she just has some feathers up front. Hair in the back. She was a companion in the first game, too. Fair. Oh, Knox. I'm not thrilled about the fact that we all have what appears to be a permanent fucking curse. Yeah. No wonder it took us so long to kill that troll. We apparently have a permanent minus 25 curse of darkness on us. Um, not sure if bug or that's just fucking awful. Or if we need to rest or something. No, only three of them are from the first game. Aloth is from the first game, Palagina and Adair. This is my character, and this is a new character in this game. I guess we'll try to rest. Maybe it'll just wear off with time. I didn't realize. You think that's bad in my game? They have like a thousand of those curses on them. How do you get rid of the curses, Photon Joker?
Wow. Found some salvage. Medical supplies. Ooh, a solitary rice farm. We can get some cheap rice here, probably. Cheap rice, I'll take it all. Cheap rice wine, I'll take it all. Cheap tar loaves. I can't probably. Uh, I'll take them all. Okay. I set off on this journey to make a bunch of money. And I have. I just. I'm just losing money. Let's see what I can sell. Well, there's some money. I'm halfway almost to my goal of 5,000. And we're resupplied. Wait, is this something up here? Nope, it's just a little bit of graphics. All right. Let's take a look at our supplies here. We're going to add to our rice. That'll last a while. Put the rice wine on. That'll help, that'll help get us through a few days. We're going through about 10 a day. We've got about six, we've got about six days worth of supplies before we have to start breaking into other supplies. we start breaking into bad supplies that nobody wants. Our morale is at a hundred though, so that's good. Our hall is fully repaired again. We don't have anybody hurt. We have plen plenty of medicine. The sea cow journeys forth. You're right, I should use up a few bad supplies while morale is so high. Because that way if I run into other events that raise my morale, it won't be like wasted. I'll wait, I'll get my morale all the way down to like 90 and then go back to... Because 100 doesn't seem to give any benefit higher than 90 did, so... It's a good, it's a good idea, Nox. Hard tack and water it is. They're not gonna like it, but they're- frankly, my crew is too fucking happy right now. I'll teach them to sing so joyously.
Morale starts going down. I don't have any reason to go back to Port Maje that I know of. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Alright, we're gonna encounter this ship and see what happens. I think they're attacking. They have the same amount of hull and sails as we do. More ammo, but less crew. He's 4th level ranger. I wonder if we should try to, um, board them. Or if we should try to defeat them at sea. I'm gonna try to kill off his crew with shots this time. And see how that works for me. Rum Dum Regair points to a dark spot on the distant horizon. Captain, a vessel approaches! You squint to the horizon and see unfamiliar colors snapping in the breeze. We could get a flag from this guy, since he's Princhippy. We could get a flag from this guy, in which case all of our journey would be, would be solved. Alright, let's try it. Alright, we've read all this text before. I'm not going to read it out every time. Alright, he is at 440, so he's too far away. We're pointing straight at him, so full, sp full speed ahead. Oh, I get 20 meters of extra speed because we beat him on initiative or whatever. He just jibed? My cannons are good up to 400 meters, right? Well, let's just get a little bit closer. They're moving around. Turn to port. We secure the wind gauge again. Fire the starboard cannons! Alright. This seems good. Wait, but we're not going to use cannonballs. We're going to use grape shot. And try to fucking wreck their crew. Alright, cool. Their crew is down to three now. Out of nine. They're shooting at us. Did a little hull damage. Prepare to jibe! Fire the port cannons! 46%? Oh, no. This is not how... I, the good cannoneer should be the one that's on two cannons. Now they're moving people around. Prepare to fire. There we go, 82%. Grape shot, let's fuck their crew up. No, fuck sales. I didn't hire you to hurt sales. I spent a lot of money on Nia. They're shooting at us. Oh shit, alright, they did a bunch of hull damage. 
Prepare to jibe! They're moving some people around. Fire the starboard cannons! Oof, that's not looking good. Hold position! Now fire the starboard cannons. <gasps> She's got a 100% chance to hit. Fire grape shot again. Yes, their crew is getting fucked. Jibe. They're moving people. We have not had a crew mutiny yet. Yet, no, Photon Joker. Hold position. Fire the port cannons. 100%. Grape shot. Kill another crew member, please. Or damage their sails, I guess. Ah, they're kind of wrecking my hull. Jibe. Hold position. They're moving a bunch of people around. Starboard cannons. I don't want to hit sails. I want to wipe their crew out. Of course, they'll be dead in the water if I take out their sails, but that's not going to help me not get wrecked by their cannons. Oh god, they're tearing me up. Jibe. Hold position. Port cannons. Well, they no longer have any sails. I don't know that that advantages us at this point in any way, though. Look, can we take their crew out or what? They're gonna destroy us. I chose a poor strategy here, obviously. Now we're hurting their... Are we just not allowed to hit their crew anymore? Well, they're still shooting cannons at us, so they can't just be below ground crew. Look, I just want to kill their crew and then go board them. I don't want to damage their ship. I want to see if I can take their ship. But this isn't working out because we're not hitting crew anymore. We haven't hit crew in so long. They're gonna sink us, but that's fine. I quick saved right before this. This is Joe Science. All right, there we go. Now we killed a crew member, or injured one anyway. Now we're taking their crew. And they're gonna sink us though. Getting other minutia ready? Like what, Saito? Dude, 
They're gonna sink us. Damn it. Well, we're dead. We're dead. Soon, the only sound you can hear over the din of cannon fire is the splinter and moan of the sea cow. Your crew is dead. The ship tilts beneath you and slides with a little more than a whisper in the arms of the sea. The dark presses in, the bright burn of sunlight now nothing but a hazy memory. You take your last breath below the waves. Your journey is ended. Alright. We can just go straight for him and try to... The life in your ship has ended here. It's true. I just want to test some shit out. Alright. Yeah, fight me. Let's see what happens if I just go straight for him. Twenty-five, thirty-five, ten to Not what I wanted. I was thinking maybe I could just weaken their crew a little bit and then go in. going the way that I want it to. See what happens if I ram. Ram the mast. It's kind of like ramming the pillar. Ramming speed! 
Your ship chews through the water, barreling down the back of waves and surging up the face. Sea spray drenches the main deck. With a deafening crunch, the sea cow and the phalandig collide, sending shards of wood and enemy sailors flying. With a rousing cry, your crew throw grappling hooks and boarding planks across the gap between the two ships. They stream onto the ship's deck, weapons at the ready. The stunned enemy crew rally and meet your sailors with the resounding boom of gunfire and clang of steel on steel. I wonder if ramming makes the fight easier. Like, it says enemy sailors were getting thrown or something. I want to see if I can literally take their ship. But last time we tried to board somebody, the fight was way the fuck too hard. So, they got paladins, pistoliers, warblers, warblers. Yeah, see, this isn't good. This fight looks a little outside. Let's see. There it says the sea cow on the side of our ship. Theodol's here, Maya's here. Oh, so the people that aren't in your party but are part of your party do get to fight on ship to ship. But where's our ogre? I guess because it, she's just the cook and she's not an on-deck crew member. Jumping over onto our shit. Eighteen percent? He's got a good fucking will. Who doesn't have a good will? These pistoliers aren't exactly willful. Let's get one of them. Oh my god, there's more of them. Paladin v. Paladin here. He mule kicked this guy. Fireball went off. Ooh. 
wolf companion. Terrible chance to hit. Did I charm somebody? I did charm somebody. Let's just keep charming people. If I can. It might be set up so that I can only charm one person at a time. But let's find out. We've all got watchful presence on. Prepare for the body on him. This guy's got Wrath of the Five Sons on him, so she's going to hit him with Flames of Devotion. We got a guy down here that's still charmed for nine seconds. He's got Prepare for the body on him. He's gonna toss him a quick heal. Aloth. Probably missed with Necrotic Lance. Try again. Not quite. Who the fuck is this? What happened to my what happened with my uh, other charm? I missed, okay. And I think the other one that was charmed is about to be uncharmed. again to charm oh no we're back to crash town 